Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. In this episode, I am going to first do a, a layer of scribbles with my Sharpie. I bought a new Sharpie because my other one was running out of ink. And this is a Sharpie brush. It has a brush type point and I think it gives a little bit so I can vary the thickness of my lines and I thought I would mimic this kind of pattern very random free form as um, texture in the background so I will proceed to do that Okay, that's my first layer and then I'm going to introduce some very bold black shapes kind of similar to the big black circles that I use um, I'm going to use one of my brayers to create a big black shape I think I will put it here on the left side so when it gets printed it comes out on the right so anyways um, I'm going to use my small jelly plate as a pad to apply the paint This is Liquitex Ivory Black. This is fairly thick. This is almost the consistency of oil paint.
Okay. So that is my first layer. And I will proceed to air dry it. I'll be right back. Okay, it's been a few minutes and my little fan has done a good job. Uh, most of this has dried. Uh, there's still a little bit of shine here, so it's still a little wet, but I think it'll be fine. So anyway, um, I'm taking the advice of one of my viewers and here is a plastic tub the kind you get when you buy mushrooms or vegetables and it's a good idea to soak your brayer right away so I don't need to be huffing and puffing uh, when I clean this so I'm going to let the soapy water do its job So now the next step is I am using this Artist Loft Unbleached Titanium and I'm going to do a little experiment. Um, I'm going to place, rather than use this directly from the tube, I'm going to place it here in my container. These uh, yogurt containers are very handy. Uh, they have an ideal shape for mixing. I'm going to add, this is fluid matte medium. It's a low gloss acrylic extender and primer. And um, the, my intention is to extend the drying time. And so I'm going to try to put maybe like a teaspoon and a half. Because I, I do notice that any paint that has a lot of white in it dries faster than the other paints. So I thought I would uh, slow down the drying time and hopefully by doing that I can pick up all of this. I'm just making sure I mix this well. I think with this fluid matte medium, uh, a little goes a long way. And that's why I'm only using a, a teaspoon. So, I'm going to try that. And hopefully this will pick up the Sharpie pen and the black paint.
seems to be, oh, I see what the problem is here. When the uh, paint accumulates here on the neck of the brayer, it kind of interferes with the, it creates a, a mark. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, that's much better. Okay. Again, this gets soaked in the plastic tub. And now here is the interesting part. I will be using a new kind of paper this is not my usual Somerset paper. This is Arnheim. And it's a, it's a paper made by Speedball. And it is specifically designed for printmaking. I do like the feel of it. It is fairly smooth. Uh, but not too slick and hopefully this will absorb the two layers. The first layer is the permanent marker and then the second layer is the titanium, unbleached titanium. this paper on for a good 10 minutes and hopefully everything will come up and transfer. Okay, back after 10, 15 minutes. I got a chance to rinse out my brayer and let's see what we got. I think it's a good transfer because the plate is really stuck on the paper. I just hope it doesn't tear. I do love the delicate textures. Yeah, I see some slight tearing here, but not too bad. So maybe by doing this test, I can gauge how much time I leave the paper on. So maybe nothing over 10 minutes. I think it's quite an effective transfer. Here's a close-up. It picked up all of the Sharpie. 
know, the bright white that you see that is a slight. Well, maybe I take it back. It maybe it's not a tear. It's just the white of the paper. But anyway, um, I'm pleased with the result and I will air dry this and for the next time I won't leave the paper that long because I have to remember this, this Arnheim is a little bit thinner so it doesn't have the, the, the thickness of the Somerset but you learn by doing so here's a wide shot so I'll air dry this and see what the next step will be okay I'm back from a short break I was able to go through my plastic stencils and put together a, a composition which I think will complement the first two layers. I'm going to do a cadmium red. Here there will be three zones. A burnt sienna in the middle and some copper on the side here. So I will actually start with copper. And here's some burnt sienna. So these are very um, fall colors. Again, this is a real challenge to be working on a tiny table.
think I got them all. I can see this smears here of purple are from the stencil, but that's okay. It will add to it will add to the color scheme. By the way, here is the to refresh your memory. Here is the monochromatic first layers. This time I will be a little more careful and not leave the paper on more than 10 minutes. Okay, let's see what we got. Pretty bold. It changes the whole feel of the print. And the copper is semi-transparent. Pretty cool, huh? I didn't expect this uh, result, but I, I like it a lot. And... Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with the uh, result on this paper because I find that since it has a smoother surface it picks up more of the very subtle really subtle texture um, on the Somerset textured one the effect looks more like a woodcut because it has like a heavy graining. This one is a little more delicate and I like that. So I'm gonna air dry this. I actually don't think it needs collage. It is a standalone. So uh, let me air dry this and then recap. Okay, back after a few minutes, uh, the print has dried very nicely and I'm very happy with this first try with this new paper called Arnheim 1618. I have to find out what the 1618 means. Um, it might be a year or it could be something else but anyway uh, i'm quite happy with this print uh, i think it's a what i call a standalone print i don't think it needs any additional collage to balance it out and i think the color scheme is striking enough to stand on its own let me show you a close-up. And I do love the way 
the paper picks up all the delicate details. A detail like this doesn't normally show up too much on the summer set. So every kind of paper has its advantages and disadvantages. And you only know by trying, the trial and error. And what works for some people may not work for me and vice versa. So anyways, I hope you like this video. Uh, I will put a description of the Arnheim paper once more on the uh, box below. And thank you so much for watching and subscribing. And I hope to see you next time.